1959, Aston Martin produced what would be the last of the small hand-built series at Feltham. Just two years later, David Brown's team released this, one of just 550 Mark III's and one of just 86 that would be drophead, allowing its user to take the top down and experience the delights of England's green fields as they raced on by. Now with its new open face grille that would become a hallmark of Aston Martins to come in the future, rolled out of the factory and into the history books. After leaving the factory, the car was delivered to a Mr. Joseph Payton. Mr. Payton had paid the not so small price of three and a half thousand pounds for his new car. He was about to discover that his latest investment wasn't just something to be dusted off for a weekend's jolly. In 1959, the Grand Tour was in full swing, and no young man's journey to becoming a gentleman was complete without experiencing a European adventure and mapping the coastlines of Monaco. And this was the purpose intended by designer John Turner, smoother and sleeker than the DB2. Internally, it was tremendously beautiful, designed in the stunning swept-back Art Deco style. Unlike the silly sports cars of today, where fitting a box of Tic Tacs into the glove box is complimented, the DB3 boasts a boot that you could easily fit two trunks in and a set of golf clubs in the back with room to spare. But this DB3 doesn't just look good touring, it's what's under the bonnet where it defines itself. Most impressively, it's overdrive, essentially giving the car a fifth gear, allowing it to run at incredibly fast speeds in low revs comfortably cruising the German autobahns at 100 miles per hour before demonstrating its agility as it climbs winding vineyard-lined roads of northern Italy. To balance out the power of its 2.9-litre engine, the Mark III was the first to be fitted with disc brakes, allowing its nose to drop smoothly into the corners. Although the car's original setup was more than comfortable for Mr. Payton's A to B, since Adrian Johnson took stewardship of the car in 2013, more than a few improvements have been made. Adrian Johnson is the world authority on Feltner Astons with 50 years experience. Having acquired the car, a full restoration began, rebuilding each aspect to the very highest standards possible with numerous enhancements to achieve total reliability, performance and durability. A body off rebuild was undertaken, including suspension, uprated and stronger springs, hubs and bearings. The rear axle was rebuilt with new crown wheels and pinion, uprated hub seals, uprated half shafts, gearbox rebuilt with new synchros and seals. The original engine block was line board, fitted with new better designed cheeses and state of the art arrow steel crank and rods, Amiga high compression pistons and DB3S camshafts, alloy head with big valves, high capacity water pump, gas flowed oil and waterways, stronger designed head studs and nuts. Uprated clutch and modern lip seals to crankshaft with special lip seals to front pulley. A new alloy fill tank, foam filled and converted to a negative earth electrical system to name just some of the improvements. A full list of which and comprehensive car ownership and history can be found on our website. Although a car of this high quality and calibre provides an excellent investment opportunity, it doesn't mean to say that this is just some relic that has to be placed into storage. Like the great bridges of Isambard Kingdom Brunel, this car was designed to be used and enjoyed throughout the test of time. Whether that means climbing high above the clouds on alpine passes or sunny Sunday afternoons at Goodwood. Although the movies went with his big brother, Ian Fleming's vehicle of choice for the books was the Mark III, and it's easy to see why. Even without the quartermaster's bells and whistles, the car itself is the gadget. And this is probably the best example of an Aston Martin DB3 Mark III drop head available anywhere in the world.